we are at types of real estate ownership. And here is where I do think we get into um, anywhere between two and four test questions um, under property ownership. So this is probably a nice chunk of information for you to really focus in on for studying for the exam. Types of real estate ownership. Um, this is how we prove who owns the property. And how we prove who owns the property is by using the word title. Just like a car title. Um, some of you might call it the pink slip. Um, it's actual record of ownership. The record that we use though in real estate to prove who owns it and has this title is the word deed. It's a deed that gets put on public record so that everyone knows who owns that property and who has title to it. We're gonna be talking about title and deeds more in our upcoming studies but let's talk about different ways that you can actually take title. I've really got five big rocks for you here. Single ownership, where there's just one person. Co-ownership, where there are two or more individuals. Ownership through a trust. Ownership by a business entity. And then the fifth type of category is actually a special type of co-ownership where you've got individual owners, but they all have a common space that they share. And I'm gonna, we'll dive into that one last. So I'll really kind of cover five big rocks here. The first one is ownership in severalty. This is ownership by one person. It's held by one person. And it's, think of it as you have severed off from the rest of the world and you own it as only one unit, one person. Co-ownership is going to be by two or more. And I think the big rock for the exam that you'll need to know is joint tenancy. Joint tenancy can be for married or unmarried couples. But the distinguishing feature that it has is the right of survivorship. And that's a great term to know for the real estate exam. What is a distinguishing feature of joint tenancy? Or what type of ownership has the distinguishing feature of the right of survivorship? The answer is joint tenancy. What right of survivorship means is that when someone passes away, there's simply one less owner. So if 10 of us own a property as joint tenants and I pass away, there's simply nine owners. Then another individual passes away. Now there's eight owners. So another really good point about joint tenancy is what type of ownership would allow a widowing spouse to stay in the home after their spouse passes away. And that is joint tenancy because there is simply one less owner. Now I've used the term probate here um, and this may come up in some of your other studies, but probate is a judicial process that determines someone's estate, whether they've got a will or not, it verifies what the estate is worth. If they've got a will, it makes sure that the will is valid, that it was made when the person was of sound mind. Um, and it, um, it helps put out public notices. So if there's anyone that thinks that they should have a right to your estate after you pass, they can raise their hand and say, yeah, this is MasterCard, they owe us five grand. Or... I'm the child that they never knew existed. Let me prove to a DNA, through a DNA test, that was my father, okay? That's the dramatic version of it. Probate is that process that if we owned it any other way, that spouse would maybe need to move out 
until we validated who actually inherited the property. But with joint tenancy, we don't need to do any of that. There's just simply one less owner. So it allows that surviving spouse to skip the pro, uh, probate process and stay in the home. Okay. Another form of ownership that might be uh, prominent in your career, depending, is tenants in common. This is, again, ownership by two or more people. What is unique about it is each individual has an undivided interest in the property, but they hold a fraction of ownership. So let's say I own something as tenants in common for a property with three other owners. There's four of us. We all have a 25% fractional ownership, but undivided interest in the property. Now, I cannot sell that property without my other three tenants in common also agreeing to sell it. But as long as I'm not married to any of them, I can sell my portion to another individuals or individuals. I also can control through my will who I want to have inherit my portion. Maybe it's the other three owners, or maybe it's going to be my sister. And now she's got a 25% ownership with these three other owners. This works great for your investor clients or clients who may not be blood relatives or clients who are blood relatives and maybe through um, tax laws, this type of ownership would be more beneficial. But it, it works a lot, I know, with investors as well. Uh, married couples, there's a couple terms in here with tenancy by the entirety and community property rights. Uh, tenancy by the entirety is a pretty old fashioned um, type of ownership. Uh, it really happened in the times where women probably weren't even able to um, get a loan without a man's signature. Um, so I'm not really as high minded on that one for you for the exam. And then community property rights is one that a few states recognize, very few recognize it, but it basically says, what you enter into a marriage with is yours and whatever you acquire while you're married is split equally. Um, I think California is probably a pretty big community property rights by my research. But again, I think your real test questions um, and an area for you to review would be for sure joint tenancy of those four. Now we go down in here to a trust. And a trust is almost like creating a fictitious person. It creates a new entity um, and it's a place for personal and real property. Have you ever heard the term trust fund baby? What that is, is a trust or almost like a fictitious person was created called a trust and we put money in it. And then that trust has directions on what to do with it. Maybe it pays out $3,000 a month. It is managed by a third party or uh, it's managed by another party called a trustee. Um, that could be the person that created the trust or it could be the vice president of a bank. It could be a family member, but that trustee manages it for the benefit of this third party known as the beneficiary. So again, let's say you've got a trust of $5 million and the trust, the directions on it say it pays out $3,000 a month. Uh, the trustee would write that check to the beneficiary every month. Um, trusts are common in Iowa with farmland. You probably have a farm friend very well that's in a trust. And what maybe their parents did is said, my kids don't farm. I want to make it easy for them. 
they put all the farmland into a trust and then they hire someone maybe to manage it. Uh, again, maybe it's the vice president of a bank and that person will help figure out what going farm rent prices are, help negotiate a contract with a farm renter. And then when the rent comes in, they'll pay taxes, insurance, any other fees, including a fee for their service. And what's left over, they will cut a check to the beneficiaries, however it's outlined in their instruction, instructed to do by the trust, okay? Up next is business organizations. And I like to just include this. Well, there's different types of business organizations. A business can own real estate. And some of you may get into the business of what I would call a broker to broker uh, business where you sell businesses. Um, but you will need a real estate license to sell these businesses if they include real estate. So I know several years ago, I was a part of a transaction for a dentist office. They sold the client, uh, staff, all the equipment, plus the actual physical building, the real estate of the dentist office. All of those things came as a package and it was a business sale. But again, we need to have a licensed real estate agent like myself involved because it included real estate in the sale, okay? So know that that can happen with a business organization as well. Last up are these three other types of real estate ownership that are a form of co-ownership, not by title, but how the design of the building and the real estate works. Um, all of these are usually some sort of apartment style where you maybe have 12 units in one building or they're a townhome style that's like houses that sit and have a shared uh, wall all rowed together. That would be a townhome style. And the first one is a condo. The second one is a cooperative. The third one is a timeshare. And for the exam, these three run together as an A, B, C option and then a random D version. Um, so I would know this. I do think you'll have a question. My bet is around a condominium. Um, a condominium is where we have a property that's owned a single unit within the building. So you own your unit walls in plus a share of common space. What's common space? Hallways, green spaces, parking lots, for example. It actually has a deed attached to it. You take title as someone in severality or a type of co-ownership like we talked about before, joint tenants or tenants in common. And then you own that unit again, walls in, and the rest is uh, green spaces, parking lots, hallways, and the exterior of the building is all shared spaces. This is often um, own, uh, managed by a homeowners association where there are bylaws created about how a monthly dues fee is charged, how, um, they put things into rules and bylaws, such as the size of pets or if pets are even allowed, okay? Again, it's got a traditional deed with it. A cooperative is very similar um, in terms of this common space. What is different about it though, and again, it's usually an apartment style um, type of living arrangement, where each person has their own unit, again, walls in. The difference is they do not own this by a deed. Rather, they owe a share in the building as a business and in exchange, they get to live in their unit. So instead of title, it's gonna have a proprietary lease to it. Now, when you sell it, 
it works the same as real estate. Real estate hopefully increases in price and appreciates. You sell it for more than what you bought it for. A cooperative is actually the same, except, except instead of the value going up, it's gonna be the value of the stock that goes up. So when you sell your shares to the cooperative, you're selling them at a higher price than what you bought them for. But you own those shares of stock in exchange for living in your unit or having your unit. Third up is a timeshare. This is very common in resort or vacation areas. And again, you own your unit walls in and probably pay a monthly uh, association fee. The key with a timeshare though, is you only own it, own it for a certain period of time throughout the year. You maybe own a timeshare of three weeks a year you get to stay in this condo in Florida, but it's for those set weeks. The rest of the time, someone else owns a week here, owns a week there. So it's group ownership. Maybe there's 20 families that own that unit and you each get two weeks a year, um, a set year that you can stay there. That is what is considered a timeshare. Um, so I would, again, know those three types of condo co-op and timeshare. I would specifically review joint tenancy. Um, that's where I would expect the exam to ask you questions on. Now on to interest in real estate. 